Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. We have just diverted the power to Edgewater and I am going to go and see the deserters and see if I can convince them to return. Now they don't have any power. They're at a distinct disadvantage. And hopefully we can use that to convince them to return. Oh, she's miles away. Can I fast travel? Yes, I can. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? Ah, oh, we can also give Thomas his books. Hey, so he's here. Uh, where are you, Thomas? There you are. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. Today's your lucky day, Thomas. I got one of those data no pads you kidding. wanted. Really? Well, which one? The elusive part three. Someone stashed it away in the old geothermal plant. The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm going to be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. I should go. Oh, we leveled up. Give some mod for our outfit. Just want to quickly look at... Electro charge surface stuns and damages melee attackers. This effect has a cooldown. That's kind of cool. Oh wait, I should have a look while I was in that menu, shouldn't I really? Okay, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? I could do again some leadership points, I think. And then I'll probably put more into dialogue because this will go 50 50 50. I'll go wrong there, right? Companion abilities. You can command your companions to use their special abilities to, en to the on the enemy you are targeting. Okay. I assume that's this thing at the bottom. I'm going. Oh. Sure. In a jiff. I didn't realise I can tell her to stand somewhere. Well, apparently... Adelaide is down here. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? Reed needs his people back. You want my flock wasting their lives in that cannery? Fine. Go and talk to them. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. Hmm. What happened to you, Adelaide? That all this anger had to come from somewhere. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery 
gathered my belongings and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. Hmm. I'm willing to deal with Reed for you. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Hmm. Reed isn't just going to leave his post. I'll need some help convincing him. Tell Reed that I can make his people healthy again. I can end their plague. Start a new garden right in the cannery. Three square meals for every man and woman in Edgewater. Tell him how I've made the veil bloom again. The soil has whispered its secrets to me. And I alone know how to breathe life back into the earth. The secret is human corpses. Oh! I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. Um... What happens when you run out of corpses? Edgewater Cemetery's got corpses aplenty. Enough for a generation's worth of crops. Okay, then. Well, let's, uh... Let's... One of us want to go see what Let... happened? You know what? Let's go talk to Reed first. Hmm. I wonder if I can talk him in at... Talk him into stepping down. I wonder how easy that's going to be. I mean, because getting these people proper food seems like a good idea. I mean, something's obviously not right. There's a there's a plague, and I'd like to know what causes the plague. And it's got, Reed must know, right? Reed has to know why there's a plague. He's the leader of this place. And they were talking about the Saltuna going weird in one of the previous episodes when I first came up here, when he was talking to Pavadi for the first time. Hello, Mr. Reed Thompson. I could just shoot him, I suppose, but that doesn't seem like it's my MO, really, does it? This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Uh... I spoke to Adelaide. She won't come back as long as you're here. Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's Choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes, but I have done my best for this town. Hmm. A change of leadership might be what this town needs. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned up freelancer, but it is my home. Adelaide's people aren't getting sick with the plague. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. Oh, God. This town doesn't eat anything but Saltuna. Of course you're going to get sick. You are disparaging our parent company, and it is not appreciated. We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. I'm pretty sure it's your food that's making you sick. You need Adelaide's garden. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us, so the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. We can use our persuade skill here. Adelaide's found a way to grow food. She'll come back if you step down. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? Uh. Let's lie. <laughs> Look, Reed. All I know is that it involves some really complicated math, and it works. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague. 
then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. What are your plans? A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. <coughs> it's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. Why not? No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. You're on us a day outside the walls, you know. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week. You don't have to do this, you know. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. This can't be easy for you. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. Take care. Well, I mean, that he took less convincing than I expected. We kind of had to lie to him a little bit. I figured if we told him about the, the whole human corpses being used as fertilizer thing, he might not be quite as uh, open to the idea. But I think, you know, in, in the long run, I think this is good for the town. <laughs> Uh, what am I doing? Uh, not the geothermal plant, the botanical lab. Oh well. Uh, let's hope she does a better job of running the place than Reed did. I mean, okay, they, all they ate was salt tuna. That would explain why everyone's getting sick. Can you imagine eating nothing but fish? The value of a mixed diet. Look at that. The snakes come back. Stop calling me a goddamn snake. I talked Reed into leaving. Come back to Edgewater. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. Edgewater's better off with you running the place. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater. Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. Okay, and this is what we need. The power regulator. Well, we'll see how that goes. I mean, hopefully they'll turn uh, Edgewater into one giant garden, because wouldn't that be lovely? We're just going to gloss over the whole bodies thing. God, map, please. There we go. Um... Yeah, we're definitely going to gloss over the whole bodies. Uh, oh. I need to return to my ship. Luckily, there's a fast travel point. Very cool looking ship. Very big guns on the front as well. Okay then. Is this oh. your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. I can understand you not wanting to go back. You didn't seem happy in Edgewater. Oh, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think?
Hmm. You just met me. Why would you want to go into space with a stranger? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. And you talked Miss McDevitt into coming back to town. Maybe one day, Edgewater will have a garden where that cannery once stood. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You've done some kindness hereabouts. I wouldn't mind following somebody like that. I'd be glad to have you along. Big cabin, yes. it's yours. I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, the Vicar's here. Who let you in? Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Okay. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. <laughs> what can I do for you, Captain? I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room Cap is located behind you. Across the cargo bay, up the ladders. I suppose the loss of the power regulator does count as a catastrophic engine. Yeah, I understand that. Ooh, this thing looks expensive. Oh, let's plug it in. Don't know why, but I expected it to spin. What's on this ladder? Oh, it's the crew quarters. We appear to have a leak. These people's rooms or oh they're all locked. I'm guessing people I need to change like location before it unlocks more of these rooms. Here's a question, do I have a room? Gotta have one somewhere, surely. Hang on, let me let me just talk to Ada, see what she wants us to do. What can I do for you, Captain? I've installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Uh, let's get out of here. communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Good, I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Unnatural drippage. <laughs> I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Uh, also, I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. 
Why do I need a la nav key to land on a planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. <laughs> Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kalkelly. Right, the black market here. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Uh, what's stopping me from just leaving Halcyon altogether? Without a skip drive? Good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Fine, I'll go have a word with Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. You want to explain what a Holographic Shroud is? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned this thing has limitations. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Whoops, I accidentally pressed a button. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Uh, why do I need a gadget for this? Couldn't I just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy cereal? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Wait, what? How the hell does a hologram sweeten your breath? Science, that's how. Oh. People will actually fall for this. It seems far-fetched. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is, they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. I'll put it to good use, thanks. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it. Let's go see if we can find this, uh... Shroud. Uh, is it not? Ah, optional receive. It's, it's the quest I already have equipped. It's above me. Okay. Oh. These are my quarters. Uh. We have a giant edge water symbol on the wall. I'm guessing that has something to do with the fact of the mission we just did. Adelaide's deserters dreamed of an independent life without board oversight. You taught them an important lesson. Never dream. 
Wow. Isn't that cool? Uh, ah, here's the holographic shroud. The holographic shroud projects a disguise on you and your companions that gives you access to restricted areas, provided you have the correct ID cartridge for that area. Restricted areas are off limits to unauthorized personnel and otherwise result in being attacked on sight. 16,000 XP, my god. And there's a bin for us to put all that rubbish in. Wonderful. But there's a computer in here. Welcome, Captain. Messages for Alex Hawthorne. Oh boy, there's a lot of things here. Let's look at these unread messages. From you, Bedford. Oh, I forgot to mention in my previous message, silly me, I'm mailing you a copy of my favourite serial, The Space Adventures of Singularity Steel. It's about a dashing space pirate with a heart of, well, steel. It's not exactly board approved, so don't you go showing it around to your spacer buddies. I hope it will amuse you while you're out adventuring. Any similarities to a certain someone are entirely intentional. <laughs> what else we got? Ooh, log entry number one. Shrink Ray. Note to self. Remember this later. No, better. Ada, remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada, not if I'm dead. Why would... You even ask me that. Back to my point. I saw in actuality with my own two eyes a sublimely powerful weapon in Wallace's Wab. Wallace's lab. Just sitting there for the taking. If the grey hair were to look away or forget about it, maybe. Or if I had asked a smidgen more nicely. He called it a shrink ray, but wouldn't let me test that claim after I lost my temper. Said he was inspired to create the thing by the achievements of other scientists who dared to push the boundaries of human knowledge and decency laws. I had heard rumours of fantastical weapons like this one. Weapons that push the boundaries of the mind and science's cutting edge. But I figured that they were just stories. To be honest, laying eyes on Wells shrinking ray first hand is enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more to the rumours. More to be had. Okay, log entry two. The hammer power. The last time I got sloshed, I mean, was imbibing at the lost hope on the groundbreaker. Look, Adam was really free with drinks. He seems like an okay fella. I shamelessly but subs... Subtly? That doesn't seem right. Subtly? Eavesdropped on two Mardot's yammering... On about a mad scientist some years back who claimed he'd made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony. Like none of us have heard that one before. But here is the good part. The mad it said the mad scientist kept yelling about the hammer's power or something similar. A strange weapon with a special power created by a crazy lab coat. Sure fits the bill. It could be another one of the weapons that inspired Wells. Okay. And then log entry number three. The black market leads. Why, why, why won't Wellis just give me the shrink ray? Blast him to the depths of Labyrinth on Tartarus and back. Let the record show I did apologise for shouting him down. Five times. But architect be damned, it's just sitting there, neglected and gathering dust. I should have commandeered it and thanked him without asking permission, or uh, breaking expensive equipment when he said he wasn't ready yet, and that even if it were, he, wouldn't, he couldn't entrust it to someone like me. What does that even mean, I ask? That I'm not tr trustworthy enough? That I'd use it to wipe out the good, hard-working folks of the colony like some sort of moralless psycho? I'll admit to maintaining some questionable associations, but I follow a strict code of me, myself, and mine. What's not to respect in that? Exactly. Now, I have to wait until Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meantime, I have been tracking down additional rumours pertaining to others of these science weapons throughout Halcyon. If gossip holds true, my next step will be to check the black market merchants on the Groundbreaker and in Fullbrook. Wow. Acquire the science weapon from Phileas. He did say to come see him in his lab. Let's go see him in his lab. Ooh. Oh, there it is. To the docking bay. Oh, welcome to the system map. Here you can see all the planets in the system as well as some special points of interest that you may have discovered. You can fly your ship to any location that you have unlocked 
Though some landing bays require special codes and keys before they allow you to land there. Moving between planets is considered extremely dangerous and all employees are encouraged to remain at home or at work. Successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain. And we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself? Or would you like to do the honors? Welcome back, Captain. Can I actually congratulate you? be of assistance? Uh, talk to you later. May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. I need a computer like this in my life. Oh, let's go into Phineas's lab. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Oh, hello. Select two com uh, companions to accompany you. Well, I guess we'll take Vicar Max and Pavadi. We only have two. Hello? Can you hear me? Does this work? Oh, damn it! Blast, that's loud. <laughs> I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. Mind the mess, sir. I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. Oh. Wow, okay. Hello? Oh, thank the law. Your skin hasn't spontaneously changed color. Potential side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. I've got uh, caffeinoids, cysty bits, if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. For what it's worth, I appreciate you pulling me out of the hope. Not at all, my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board and emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. I wanted to talk to you about something of else. Course. What's on your mind? There, uh, some reason you're hiding behind bulletproof glass. Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeinoids, plenty of toilet paper. Absolutely. God damn it. Uh, then you ever leave your lab? Oh goodness, no! I wouldn't survive ten seconds in the blackness of the aether. Well, no, I imagine I'd last at least twelve. Seconds I didn't mean out the airlock, you moron. Consciousness and die of hypoxia. <sighs> That's not what I meant. Do you have some kind of life outside your work? Life outside work? No, of course not. My life is my work. For that matter, everyone else's lives are also my work. An entire colony's worth of lives are at stake. It's up to me, uh, up to us, to set things right. To answer your question, I'd rather stay right here in my lab. There's too much work to be done. The Hope's colonists won't revive themselves, you know. Why are you so obsessed with reviving the Hope's colonists? Because we've lost our way. The board has a stranglehold over this colony, and we've all been conditioned into total obedience. The Hope is full of specialists, scientists, engineers, talented individuals like you, and people who haven't been corrupted by the board. Unfortunately, the Hope's colonists have been frozen for decades, well past your shelf life, so to speak. No offense. <laughs> yeah, but you revived me, so you must have solved the problem. Ah, you begin to perceive the truth. Yes, according to the board and their narrow-minded scientists, you should be a pile of organic sludge right now. Ten years. That's how long the average human can remain in hibernation. You were frozen for decades. In theory, you never should have survived the revival process. But the conventional theories are wrong. You're living proof that it can be done. 
There's yet hope for the hope. Get it? I'm glad to hear that. Everyone on the hope is depending on us. We'll do our very best to save them all. I'd best get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of caffeinoid fading. Okay, well, this is the shrink ray. <laughs> Science weapons. Science weapons are unique weapons that have strange and powerful effects. Science weapons damage and their strength of their effects both increase as your science skills are increased. Aha. I think my science skill is awful. Whoa! Yeah, I mean, we jump. Oh, hang on. Can I equip it? Uh, 36 damage per second. I want to try it on bubbles. Ah. Nice hit. Oh. It's a pile of ash. Oh, I think this might be the perfect place to end this episode. We have gained a new weapon and uh, we are finally out of Terra 2. So, on to the groundbreaker, I suppose. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know you think your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, let me just get on the ship. Uh, I'll see you next time.